We'll continue now with the University of Colorado, joined on the podium by head coach J.R. Payne, along with student athletes Jalen Sherrod and Quay Miller. Same format, we'll open up first to a uh, opening statement from head coach J.R. Payne. Yeah, I'll just start the same way I, I love to start. I freaking love my team. I'm so, I love each and every one of them so much. I'm so unbelievably proud of our uh, our tenacity, our, our, our ability to just never wilt. It, when, when things get hard, we dig in, we lean into each other, and we just continue to fight and compete every single possession. Um, Duke's an incredible team, you know, one of the best defensive teams in the country. We knew that it would be a great defensive battle between two teams that love to play defense. Um, and so our team did a great job of really preparing in a short amount of time for, for such an experienced veteran ball club. Um, and just really proud of, of how we stayed together, you know, leaned into each other and, and just did what we needed to do that, down the stretch. So super proud and onward we go. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. To the front. <clears throat> Brian Howell from the Bowl Daily Camera. And first off, the obvious one. Can both of you just share your emotions of you know, getting to the Sweet 16 first time in 20 years for this program? Quay, would you start, please? Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, I was just telling Jalen, like, I knew we could do it. It was just a matter of actually doing it. Um, right now, I just feel, like, extremely blessed for real. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm still taking it all in, but blessed for sure right now. And, yeah. Jalen? Uh, yes, uh, piggybacking off what Quay said, it's a blessing to be in this position. Um, I just told the team, like, being here for four years from where we started to where we are now, um, like, I, I just, I'm just really proud of this program and how far we've come and the work we put in, the hours, the belief when nobody else believed, like, it was tough. Like, just being in a group of, and it's hard when you, you, are working towards something that you can't really see in front of you. But I told, um, I think it was Corey this morning, um, all the 6 a.m.s, the running up the mountains, all of that prepared us for this moment. So um, when you're doing it, you really don't see that outcome. But uh, that's what is all, it, it's all worth it in the end when you get to this point. The front room on the left. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Joseph both players, you know, the, there were certainly a lot of fouls uh, called in the first few quarters. There was, there was just a lot of conduct that was being called. And then especially down the stretch, there was a lot of, you know, letting all play. Just what went into, you know, being able to make that sort of in-game adjustment to how the refs uh, are calling the game and to be able to make that adjustment faster than Duke? Jalen, would you start, please? Um... Yeah, I mean, fouls get called in every game. You just got to stay poised, stay ready for it, um, and just, you know, play through it. That's really all you can do. Um, because, I mean, mistakes happen. You foul sometimes. But it's all about just still staying locked in, staying poised, not letting it get to you, brush it off like it's the next play, and you just you just focus on whatever's in front of you. You can't worry about what happened. Front of room to Jim. <coughs> Thanks. A uh, question for the players. You're on the road, hostile crowd, a long way from home. You jump out to 15 to 2 league. Can you just describe what was going on, what was working so well in, during that five, six minute stretch? Quay, would you start? Yeah. Um, I think it was just our togetherness, um, which showed throughout the whole game. Um, we just played as one, as a unit. And whenever we play that way, um, that's how we build our biggest leads. Jayla. Um, yeah, I think we just came out with an intensity about ourselves. Um, and we also knew, like, from Scout that, you know, they would press us. They like to get up their high-level defensive team. And we just knew, like, we couldn't be timid. We had to attack it. Um, and the more we came out attacking it, maybe that would lessen up the pressure. So it was just game plan. It was just a level of focus that I think this team started out with and finished with. And a quick follow-up for Clay, if I may. Uh, 14 rebounds against a very big team. You call right out score Duke 16-6 on second-chance points. Can you talk about how that happened, how important that was to you win? 
Yeah, um, every time I went to the huddle, T was telling me to crash. And I was just trying to do the best I could. Um, he kept telling me to crash, and I was just trying to grab every uh, board that came my way. To Bob on the right. Yeah, Bob Sutton with the Associated Press. What were you able to do after Duke took the lead in the second half to kind of steady yourselves and not let that their momentum keep going? Quay, you want to start? Yeah. Um, I think the best thing that we did, honestly, was just embrace it. Like, even though they were the crowd was going against us, it's a beautiful environment, and we thrive off that. We've been the underdogs all season. So having a group of a gym full of people and a band yelling at us and not going for us is what we're used to. Um, I think, actually, we play better in those environments just because we've adapted that mentality from Jalen. And, yeah, we just thrive off that for real. It's really... Not it, it doesn't. I don't think we look at it as fans that aren't going against us. I guess we look at it as like, oh, they're not cheering for us. Like, let's turn it up even more. Like, let's make them even more mad. <laughs> Jalen, would you like to handle that as well, please? Um, yeah. Uh, I think Quave really summed it up. I think um, I just I love hostile environments. I just love being a bad guy and feed off of that. And I think the team feeds off of that too. So. Uh, and like Koi said, we've been in a lot of those situations, so I don't think it was anything that shocked us. Um, and we've had moments this season where we had to learn from those situations where we kind of wavered and gave into the in environment rather than um, embracing it. So I think it just shows the maturity level of this team to have grown from that situation and, and know how to deal with it in the postseason. On the left, the CL. CL Brown with the Raleigh News and Observer. Um, this is for uh, Jalen. Um, can you tell me about that last layup you made in regulation that that tied the score? How how you saw that play develop, and uh, and I got to follow after that. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. I think it was it wasn't out of a timeout, or I don't really remember. But um, when I when I got downhill, I knew that my man had got screened off, and I had sw it was six six on me and. I knew like nine times out of ten, you give a six six player a pump fake when you five six, they gonna want to swat it to the stands. So um, I think just like knowing that, um, and also knowing we needed a score, I was like either I'm gonna get fouled or I'm gonna get the layup. Um, I actually wasn't expecting her to foul, but uh, I just knew I had to do something to get her engaged with the ball, um, and I couldn't just go straight up. So. And uh, you guys ended up closing the game. I think it was 15-3 to three between the end of regulation and, and overtime run. Um, was there anything that you felt like was working defensively that kind of got them out of a groove and, and limited their scoring? Uh, yeah, our zone is not a typical zone. It's very high pressure, very aggressive. Um, and I think once we got to that, it just really got them out of rhythm um, because I think um, – on their stretch that they came back, they hit a couple threes, and we knew that we needed to do something to kind of throw that off, throw that rhythm off. So when we went zone, I think it really worked for us because it made them um, think. And we don't always run zone a lot, um, so it's just something we always have in our back pocket. Anything else for the student athletes? Right, to the front, last question. If I can, I'll have one for each of them. Uh, so, Quay, I know you got tired of me asking about your shooting and your scoring and all that. Looks like you're back. How, how good did tonight feel for you to get in the rhythm early in this game and um, kind of set the tone? Um, <clears throat> it felt really good. Um, I think that for me, it was nothing um, that I was doing differently. It was all mental. Um, so I just really locked in and prayed harder and um, really focused on things that um, were in my control, um, which was my communication with God. And I think that once I um, really got into my word more and understood what he was trying to tell me, um, that's when it all came. And I think that really happened today right in pregame. And then for Jalen, I don't know how many times you've come up limping this year, but every time you come back out and you're just fine. Um, how are you feeling after something like this? I mean, this was such. This is probably one of the rougher games you guys have had. Just fine. You were right. Just fine. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think oftentimes, like even when I do go down, I just be. Like, I just need a minute. 
Like it could, <laughs> but um, I mean that's just what I, what I do. Like I know this team needs me. I know I need to be out there for my team, even if it's just to bring the ball up and get open, um, and use my speed to get the ball in. So I knew like you get up. I mean. I mean, you get pushed down enough, you know how to get up and dust it off, and it's a mental game at that point. So, yeah, I feel it now. The adrenaline and wore off, um, <laughs> but um, you just you just find a way. When it means that much to you, you find a way. So, yeah. All right. Thank you for your time. Best of luck next week. Thanks. Thank you. Questions now for head coach J.R. Payne. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll start with CL on the left. Hey, coach CL Brown with the Raleigh News and Observer. Um, that back pocket, pulling that zone out of your back pocket, were you, were you looking just to kind of disrupt them early and figured you would return back, or was that something that you thought, you know, we can ride this out? Yeah, I mean, I have to give all defensive credit goes to our associate head coach, Toriano, who runs our defense, so that was his decision. Um, the, the type of defense we played when we came out early is how we like to defend. I mean, we want to be – highly disruptive. We want to pressure. Um, you know, everything's pretty scout driven though. So there's times that we don't necessarily play like that, but it, it is, Jalen alluded to it. It is our mindset. Like we're, we're the ultimate underdog. Like we, we were picked eighth. We finished third. No, everyone, everyone had us out of their bracket, you know, had us losing in the first round almost. And, um, and so we relish that, you know, but, but we kind of play with that type of chip on our shoulder and that toughness defensively. So that was T's decision to go zone. I thought it was a great decision um, and thought it created, you know, some opportunities for us uh, on the offensive end as well with some turnovers. On the left, Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell Northam, North Carolina Public Radio. Coach, I was just kind of wondering how you game plan for a defender like Celeste Taylor, who kind of <laughs> just seems to be everywhere with the yeah. long arms and filling up a stat sheet. Yeah, I mean, she's incredible, truly. You know, uh, I've watched Celeste play since high school. You know, we tried to recruit her. You know, a long time ago when she was coming out of high school and, and she already, you know, had her choices. But so we've been fans of hers for a long time. Um, I think she plays the game the way it's meant to be played with a lot of tenacity, a lot of discipline, a lot of toughness. Um, and so it is hard to game plan for her. But the, the great thing about our team is that we do have a lot of weapons. You know, we have a lot of different players that can do a lot of different things. And so um, while they're a great team defensively, they only had one Celeste, you know, and so we knew that she'd probably be on Frida um, as far as trying trying to be disruptive on her. And so we, you know, we're able to kind of capitalize in, on different positions and try to take advantage if there were ways that we could try to keep Celeste away from the ball a little bit. Um, but yeah, she's incredible. Right to Bob. Some of us may have been misled uh, the other night after all the offense, but ultimately it seemed like the defense is what got you. Yeah where you needed to get um, what was going on in the last possession, Duke's last possession on regulation and then in overtime to shut them down. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we've all kind of alluded to it. We, we do hang our hat defensively, like, like we're a defensive-minded team, um, you know, as is Duke. And so we take a lot of pride in being stingy, you know, making touches difficult, things like that. Um, and I think when when things get difficult for us, these guys these guys said it. We lean into each other. Like we really we have great communication when things are hard. Um, we we thrive in environments like this. You know, in the Pac-12, we play in a lot of big, crowded gyms, and so we're we're used to that. So our communication is usually pretty good. And we were able to just yeah just make sure we were talking. We were in the right spots. We were disruptive, and ultimately rebounding down the stretch became important for us. Back to Mitchell on the left. I know this game just ended, but uh, do you have any early thoughts on, you know, the road doesn't get any easier, uh, <laughs> Iowa? Right. Uh, I mean, they're incredible. We played them years ago. So this is my seventh year at Colorado. Um, we played them early uh, in the NIT, and I don't know which round it was, maybe third round of the NIT. And they're they're so good. I mean, everybody knows Iowa. They're great. They're they're so well coached. They're disciplined. They're they're probably everything you want in a basketball team. So um, definitely, we'll enjoy the victory tonight, and then we'll start to work tomorrow on them. To the front. Uh, 
Coach, you guys had a huge advantage in point paints or mm -hmm. paint points. In the paint. Yeah, uh, I think it's thirty-four twenty, and then the rebounding. Uh, yeah. we, we talked to Quay, but also Aaronette, and she had those two straight in overtime. Can you talk about how big that aspect was tonight and with those two? Yeah, I mean, they, they were really important. Like I said, we have good balance. I mean, we have a lot of different players that not just are capable, but have stepped up in really big moments. You know, we've had several people hit huge late game shots. We've had several different people have huge late game stops, you know, and, and scores and things like that. So uh, we also have a very unselfish group, which which is cool, you know, and so so nobody really cares who gets the winning shot. Nobody cares who gets the winning defensive rebound or the forced turnover or things like that. And I think when you have balance and you have a team that really genuinely is unselfish like that, then you can play great basketball no matter where you are, who you're playing, what environment. And I think we showed that tonight. Anything else? All right, Coach, thank you for your time. All right, thanks, you guys. Go Buffs. <laughs>